I just want to welcome Sandy aboard and um, congratulate her on on rejoining the Board of Education. So we're like to have you. Go ahead and can I get a motion to open the meeting? So moved. Everything is echoing with me, so. Is someone using their phone? I think Sandy's on twice on her phone and computer maybe. I'm not on phone. No, my phone's not on. No, you mute, Sandy. See if it's you. I'll turn off my phone. There we go. That's much better, yeah. So now, but now I'm removed from the webinar, it says. We can see you. Okay, I got nothing but a frozen screen, but okay. Um, Sandy, are you separately though logged on to Board Docs? Are you able to see the resolutions and stuff? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So then in, I think there's, there shouldn't really be much of a need um, for the screen, but of course, if you, if you feel like there's something you're missing that I'm not anticipating, just stop us and, and we'll figure it out. Um, and then Chris, for the executive session to meet with council, um, I hadn't anticipated it, so I just didn't send up a link. So um, we just, we'll, if, if that's something you feel is necessary, we need to do that, but um, it can be accomplished. If, if we can't do it, then I'll just recuse myself from the vote. Okay. Again, I said it can be accomplished. Okay, so so I have a, I'm sorry, I had a motion to open the meeting by Chris Tice, and I don't have a second. I'll second. Thank you. So it should come up to take a vote, Sandy, in a minute. You should get a pop-up screen. Um, Susan, do you want to vote verbally? Up oh, there she goes. And I don't have Yorgos on. Sandy, did you get a pop up? No, I did not. It says join okay. audio by computer. That's all I got. Okay. Do you want to uh, vote yes? No. Uh, open. Vote. Yeah, Jeff, you just want to give a little update that we so that we can just make be totally transparent about this. This is just voting to open the meeting, Sandy. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were on the thing. I'm my bad. Uh, yes. Okay. So that's four yes. I'm going to mark your ghost not present at vote. Motion carried. Okay. Um, let's stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Looks like your ghost is back on. Yep, I'm here, sorry. That's okay. No problem, your ghost. So we just um, opened the meeting and said the pledge. So we're, we have the one action item to get through um, and it's awarding the bid for the retaining wall at the Sag Harbor Learning Center. Jeff, did you want to go through it first and how we got to here? And then um, I understand Chris might want to call an executive session to discuss with council. Sure. So um, as all of you are aware, uh, the wall in the rear of the learning center was identified as being problematic. And um, going back probably over six months ago uh, with the original architects, uh, we designed a wall that was estimated to come in at a cost by the architects of about $200,000. We did a, um, an RFP for that and the bids came in around a million dollars. So um, we, uh, on the advice of the architectural firm that we were using at that time, we considered a, a building block uh, scenario that was significantly cheaper. Um, we decided to go with uh, someone locally based, an architectural firm um, to design uh, and, and move forward with them uh, based on part of that, part of that decision was based on the fact that they estimated that the cost would be uh, in and around $175,000. Um, we were waiting for uh, New York state approved vendors um, to, to put forth estimates. We received those estimates uh, the end of last week. 
those estimates were significantly more than $175,000. In fact, uh, with the add alternates uh, added, they were 408,000 respectively. Uh, and let's see, the original 408,000 and 456,000. So I had a discussion with them um, them being several employees from the architectural firm and expressed the district's surprise and displeasure with the fact that the estimates came in or the proposals significantly higher to the tune of 250% higher than the, the original um, guesstimate, if you will, that it was going to be 175. Um, the architectural firm said they would go back to the two vendors who they have relationships with and see if they could do better. Uh, one of the vendors said, no, thank you. We, we, our bid is what it is. The other, which is Laser Industries, came back and essentially lowered their bid from a total of a base bid of 456 to a base bid of 319. Uh, the ad alternates, which basically came to 22,000, remain the same. So it went from 456 plus 22 to 319 plus 22. I asked them for an explanation as to the why of the decrease in cost. They said it had to do with uh, the shipping of the materials and who was going to take that responsibility, the contractor or the supplier, uh, and uh, just their uh, discussions with them, explaining the context and those types of things. So, um, those are the numbers. I shared those with the Board of Education. This is different than a typical um, situation where you go out to bid. When you go with a New York State approved vendor, there essentially is uh, not a contract. Uh, what you do is you approve the proposal and then you move forward with the creation of a purchase order. Um, so what happens is the company, uh, Laser Industries, would submit evidence that they're uh, on the New York State list. And then our attorney reviews all, all of those things, make sure everything is in order, uh, and then we move forward. Um, right now, the timing is such, according to the, to the engineers and architects that I spoke to, that the utility mapping will take place, um, if approved, Monday and Tuesday of next week, and construction would start the end of next week. Um, what I've focused on all along with this is trying to get this done by August. So we're in a, we're on a pretty tight tight line uh, to get it done. Uh, obviously not happy that the estimates came in uh, higher, even with the revision uh, 319 plus the 22, which is basically 341 is significantly higher uh, than 175, just shy of hundred percent higher. Um, but if we want to use this building, my recommendation is we move forward. And that, when I say we want to use it, if we want to use it in September at the opening of school, uh, my recommendation is that we move forward. Jeff, thank, yeah. you, thank you for putting that into context. So what controls or assurances do we have that they will be on time and on budget? And I'm only asking because as we all know, and have lived through the horror of the past several years where we've been millions of dollars over budget and we've had delay after delay after delay and we've been given dates that have never happened and then happened two, three, four, five months later. So I know we're in a tight time frame now. I just feel like I, I have an uneasiness about having any confidence that between now and the end of August they're going to get this done unless there's, you know, you know what, what uh, controls are in place to ensure that. Yeah, the answer to your question is if in going with a purchase order scenario where we don't go out to bid, we relinquish uh, significant control because we don't have a contract uh, per se. So, uh, you know, Tom can speak more about it, but basically it's, it's the same that we would um, be engaged in with any, anybody that we issue, issue a purchase order with absent a contract. So we relinquish a lot of that. Uh, leverage, if you will. I'm not sure you would have an awful lot of leverage in this situation because it's a pretty straightforward um, construction process. It's basically some pre-assembled blocks that they need to put down. But given what's transpired, um, your question's fair. 
And just so that the public understands, what was the reasoning of the district behind going this path versus the other path where we could potentially contractually have more teeth in this? Uh, timing. If we wanted to go out to bid, um, you're looking at probably another three to four and a half weeks. Um, that would be the first consideration. The other consideration was that one of the reasons that we chose to go with the architectural firm we're currently using is they're locally based. So uh, in all likelihood, the vendors that put forth the proposals are the same people who would be putting forth uh, the bids. So they sort of said, hey, look, if we're, these are gonna be the same people and you're on a tight timeline, this is what we recommend. So if we had wanted to have the other option where we would have more controls, we would have had to just start sooner. Yeah, and I think even if you started sooner, you wouldn't have been able to get in um, by September when the decision was made to go this route. Yeah, and we, I mean, to be, to be fair, we did start sooner, right? We had that first set of bids in January. Yep. So, um, so we did start, you know, a long time ago. Um, I also would just add, um, I, I, I don't want to, I'm not the school attorney. I'm not speaking from knowledge on this, but I would imagine that there's a set of terms and conditions at the state level that any approved vendor is signing on to. So I don't, it's not, I just, I don't no. think we're by, by signing on the dotted line here and approving this contract. It's not like we're saying we're giving you $319,000. And if you don't perform, there's no recourse, right? Sure. They have to do certain things and confirm their obligations just to get on that list. Well, so we're, we're not, we're not tonight. We're not approving a contract. We're approving a bid. Correct. Will we see, then approve the contract? So we at least have, we can see that or are we approving a bid and then we never see the contract before it's done? So what you're approving tonight, the resolution tonight is to uh, approve the bid pending review and approval by council. So all the paperwork is, is sent over to Tom Bowles, our attorney. He reviews it and then communicates with us as to whether or not he thinks uh, it's, uh, it's appropriate to move forward. So it's kind of the same process we've had on this project the whole time of, we don't see the contracts. I know because early, and I'm only raising it because the board has brain wrestled publicly several times, frustration that we didn't see the contracts and we got stuck late late and over budget. So I, you know, if possible, I would like to be able to ask Tom about some contractual issues. Okay, I have his number. Um, we can go into exec if that's something you wanna do. I do, for, for me to be able to feel confident to move forward, I would, or I'm, if we have four other people who are gonna support it, I can abstain. If no one else feels like they need to have that information from council. Feel free to make the motion, Chris. I, I'm, I make the motion to go into executive to um, discuss with council the potential contract with this vendor. Second. I'll second it. Okay, can we just do verbal? Sure. So Sandy, yes or no? Yes. Susan Schaefer? Susan? Susan, it looks like you're unmuted. <laughs> I'm ready to go board docs. All right. Do you want me to throw it on board docs? Sure. Okay, hold on. Uh, motioned. I have Sandy Krull seconded, and it's going to open up for vote. Okay, um, that is for us. Uh, Sandy, you still yes? You verbally yes. said yes. Okay, and I don't see your vote. Uh, so I'm going to mark your ghost not present and motion carried to go into executive session.
Okay, board, um, board members, Jeff, I uh, sent a Zoom link. Oh, I forgot to send it to Tom. Is it Tom that we're meeting with, Jeff, or is it a different one? Yeah. Tom? So, yeah, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to contact him and tell him, tell him you're sending a Zoom invite. Yep, I, I sent it to the, the, the BOE email list and I'll forward it to Tom right now. Okay. All right, and then afterwards, I guess to approve this item, we all need to log back on to as panelists back onto this Zoom afterwards. So it sounds like Scott needs to keep the meeting open. We all though need to log out of this meeting, otherwise it there might be an issue where the executive session is is heard. So just be cognizant of that. So I'm gonna go log so out. So we're now. leaving the webinar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you sent us another link? Yeah, I just, I emailed it to your Gmail, Sandy, just to make sure you got it. Okay. All right. Bye, all. Bye. All right, so we're out of exec. Victoria, just so you have it for the record, I made the motion to convene out of exec, um, and Chris seconded, and every, um, everybody agreed. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, was it, was um, your ghost back in there with you? Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I, um, so I think we had already made the motion, right, Victoria, on action item 3.1, or we hadn't? You had not. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve action item 3.1. <laughs> One last no. Sorry, guys, back on. Um, I made the motion. Does someone want to second it? I'll second it. And okay, you're second. Any okay. discussion? Jeff, this is it for the building. This finishes the um, the end of money being expelled at this point to the best of your ability. The exception of less than a half a percent of punch list items, uh, yes. Yeah, the only thing we have to do is the signage, I think, right? Yeah. That's out of the punch list. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure there's no more big ticket surprises for, any, for the That's public. A, yeah, I have the same information that the board has. Okay. Thank you. Hey, I'm opening it up. Sandy, you're not getting any. Um... No, I have no. I have a motion here. Like, yeah, no. How do you vote? Yes. Okay. And, and Victoria, I don't have access, so okay. I'm yes too. You're yes. Okay. Okay, so that's four yes, and Chris Tice abstains. Okay, and can I um, get a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. Okay, Sandy, how do you vote? Yes. Georgos, how do you vote? Yes. That's unanimous. Thank you. All right. Thanks all. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Happy Fourth of July. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone.